All right, so here's the agenda of what I'll talk about today. And as you can see, there's quite a bit to cover. So we'll start at the very top with NASA's organization and its budget. And we'll then discuss the mission directorates and then the NASA centers before concluding with the agency's top contractors. Now, those of you familiar with our market intelligence briefings uh, in the past are really likely used to seeing us discuss major IT programs, but that won't be the focus of today's presentation simply because, as you'll discover, those major IT programs are only a piece of the overall picture of NASA IT. Now, I'll mention some of these programs when I speak about NASA centers, uh, but it's important to understand this. The bulk of NASA's IT funding resides in mission directorates embedded in systems development. So here's the overall NASA landscape. And it's important to remember that NASA is a rather decentralized IT organization. The mission directorates and the NASA centers have a great deal of autonomy in their IT purchases. First, let's talk about the NASA masthead. So Charles Bolden continues to be NASA's administrator, uh, administrator, a position that he's held since July of 2009. Lori Garver was the deputy administrator of NASA until she stepped down in September of 2013, and currently that position does remain unfilled. Beth Robinson continues as the chief financial officer. And as I'm sure most of you on this call are aware, Larry Sweet is NASA's CIO. I'll talk in a little more depth about Larry's leadership team in a few slides, but first I wanna highlight the IT insertion points across NASA on this slide like I've done with the wheel. First is NASA's CIO here at headquarters in Washington, DC. Next, we'll discuss the mission directorates whose leadership also sits up here at headquarters in DC, but whose personnel do work at our next location, the NASA centers and I'll talk about four of these centers in particular. I will also discuss NASA's Shared Services Center. Now, uh, lastly, we'll also talk about NASA's major contractors and why it's going to be important to establish partnerships with them. So here's an overview of NASA's FY14 budget, which has a total figure of $17.6 billion. Now, something that uh, is worth uh, noting is that the budget agreement that Congress reached last month should hopefully mean that agencies start to spend a little more freely because they don't have that threat of sequestration hanging over their heads for FY14 or FY15. Now, a few additional things I'd like to call attention to on this slide. You might notice uh, that on the chart on the left, you can see tiny slivers of blue, and that represents DME funding. Uh, so that's Development Modernization Enhancement Funding which, as you'll recall, represents uh, funding for new programs or new starts. Now, this level of funding is very low compared to other civilian agencies, which, you've, which usually average around 20% of their IT uh, as being DME funding. Now, the pie chart on your right shows a breakdown of uh, funding with mission delivery having about two-thirds of NASA's IT spending and the remaining third representing IT infrastructure and other support applications. So this division of funding is actually very similar to the breakdown of how the IT budget is controlled by the mission directorates on the one hand and the centers and headquarters CIO on the other. And it really reinforces the idea that the primary holders of IT dollars are in the mission directorates. So how exactly is this IT budget request I talked about broken out? And where should you go if you sell a certain type of technology? Well, here's what I'll sketch out for you over the rest of this presentation. There are four major insertion points across NASA, depending on the type of product you sell. And I want to give you a better idea of where to go to target where the largest concentration of IT dollars for your products are going to be. So we're gonna start up here with a discussion of headquarters, where tools that will help governance and spending oversight are going to be key. So NASA's CIO is Larry Sweet, and quickly, here's his headquarters leadership team. Deborah Diaz is the deputy CIO. Valerie Burks is the chief information security officer. Gary Cox is the deputy CIO for IT reform. 
J.C. Du is the Associate CIO for Architecture and Infrastructure. And Gene Sullivan is the Associate CIO for Enterprise Portfolio Management. I'll give you another second or two on the slide in case you are jotting down any of these names. So here's Larry's top 10 list of priorities for fiscal year 14, and you'll see I've really broken them out into two groups. So the first is a technology level, like IT security, the cloud, bring your own device, or BYOD, and a more customer-centric model of IT that'll enable collaboration and telecommuting tools for NASA employees. Now, I'm sure all of us in the IT community are familiar with these topics, as IT security is the biggest focus in today's world. Cloud is one of the chief ways in which agencies are looking to save money. And BYOD, customer centricity, and work-life balance are all about ensuring employee engagement and satisfaction. Um, although I do want to note that NASA always receives high marks as one of the top federal agencies to work for. Now, the next aspect uh, you'll see on the lower right is that of policy and, and governance, attempting to align uh, more strongly with Obama administration priorities like digital government and cost savings while addressing the looming issue of IT policy lagging significantly behind the available technology. Now, all of these priorities intertwine, and you're going to find that the CIO's FY14 goals are going to be talking points that will resound at every level within NASA, from the center CIO, to the program manager, to the end user. And you're going to want to talk about how you can make NASA's data more secure, how you can save the agency money through the cloud, and how you can enable BYOD and telecommuting for employees while ensuring that they can still do their jobs, and how you can help NASA bridge that gap between policy and technology.